Hey guys, Kinsey here, and I'm back with a quick look at a brand new indie game called Way of the Passive Fist. And this is a pretty awesome arcade brawler. Um, it's released by Household Games, which was founded just in 2016 by an industry veteran, and they're based out of Toronto, Canada. So you know what? Let's take a look. So this is Way of the Passive Fist, and it looks awesome. I dig the retro style so much. And the music is great too, even though, well, this is non-copyrighted YouTube music, but trust me, it's great. And one of the first things I noticed about this game, well, besides the looks and the music, is this awesome, like the difficulty scaler that's on here. It's so in-depth and I just think it's so awesome. You can adjust the enemy strength, and that could just be like enemy attacks will be weaker or stronger, things like that. You can adjust encounters, so meaning how many enemies you face at a time. Uh, combo masteries. And this one was actually really helpful for me where it counts like late parries and things like that. Because not knowing like too much about this game, I wasn't so sure my timing was going to be perfect. And it wasn't. You play as the Wanderer. A mysterious figure who wanders the waste of a distant planet called Zircon 5. And it was a once prosperous planet, now a post-apocalyptic wasteland. And you have studied the way of the passive fist. Meaning, you don't do any of the actual attacking here. This is, you have to parry and dodge and dash and shoulder check to basically, you know, outlast your enemies. This is the way of the passive fist. So you're not doing any punching and kicking and beaten ups like you would normally would in this style of game. But I think it's kind of cool because it is a different take. It isn't just another brawler, which is cool. Um, so the whole point is you are trying to outlast your enemy. So the more you parry, you can put down their exhaust gauge and eventually you can just push them over. Well, I guess there is a little bit of punching and kicking. There is a pretty fun combo system in this. And that way you can do like a devastating power punch is the first one that you get. And some of these attacks are pretty sweet and very useful, especially with the bosses. And speaking of bosses, like a true retro style beat em up, this one has no shortage of fun, crazy characters. No more box. And the boss fights I actually found pretty challenging, and especially this guy, because it actually took me a little bit to realize what to do. You have to build up your combo, and then only a power punch can hurt him. Oh! <laughs> but it was so much fun. It just so much reminded me of, like, you know, playing the old ones in the arcade and things like that. A lot of, like, really fond memories of, with beat-em-ups, and having this one be like that but different was great. Another thing I thought was worth mentioning was the amount of settings that you can change. Uh, you can change to high contrast, which might really help with people with like color blindness and things like that. And you can also change the flashing effects and the shaking effects and things like that. I also really appreciate it when a game lets you remap the controls. When I first started playing, all the motion was mapped to the analog sticks, which I didn't love. Um, but once I found this menu, I changed everything to the D-pad stat. This game has a lot of repeating enemies, where differences in color variation means differences in difficulty and speed. Um, but they're pretty much all pattern-based. But then once you think you learn a pattern, they end up throwing a purple guy at you and you're like, damn man. He's fast. <laughs> but I think that's just part of the fun of this game is, you know, they might not seem like there's a lot of variations in enemies, but then they'll throw you a curveball. And I think that's really fun. All right, let's head back to the game room for some final thoughts. But first, I want to squeeze in. Thank God for checkpoints. 
So that was a quick look at Way of the Pacifist. And some takeaways that I have from it is that I just thought this game looked great. I think the whole aesthetic of it is really, really nice. I really like the graphics and the music and the kind of the whole picture. Um, I also really liked that sliding difficulty, like customizable, customizable difficulty scale. I thought that was really awesome. And that's something I, you know, I actually really hadn't thought of, but now I'm just hoping more games do it in the future. Um, some things I didn't like as much were I really wish that it was co-op. A co-op in the story mode would have been awesome because when I think of like you know a throwback arcade brawler I think of things like you know the Simpsons and turtles and like all these things I played in arcades which are all multiplayer um, so that was a little bit of a disappointment for me but I understand that this is like the studio's first game and that's a whole nother level and for what it is it's it's pretty well done um, another thing is that I thought it was pretty difficult <laughs> Um, but then again, you know, I'm not really like a Dark Souls or even a punch out person. But if you are one of those people, uh, learning enemy patterns and timing and things like that, then, you know, this game is probably right up your alley. So, but when I also, when I say it was difficult, um, I don't think that it was like cheap or unforgiving or really anything like that. So, you know, don't let that stop you from getting it. Um, <laughs> But overall, I did really like it. It looks great. And it's only $14.99 on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Steam. So I mean, at that pr price point, it's definitely worth a look. And you can find me on the internet at Kinzilla, K-I-N-S-Z-I-L-L-A, -L -L on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And thanks so much for watching, and thanks for subscribing. Cheers.